Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, uh, obsession and being very fixated on something. <clears throat> I mean, everything, I mean, it's a great uh, question. I mean, the way I sort of see it is uh, levels of consciousness and, and things occurring uh, at different levels of consciousness. And it's quite... Uh, so at a, at a low level of consciousness, i.e. when there's a lot of repressed feelings, a lot of belief systems, uh, there tends to be addiction at the same time, at a low level of consciousness, because all those repressed feelings and, and, the, and the strong identification with thoughts, usually uh, some form, you know, whatever it is within the limiting beliefs, usually one form of addiction or another to, um, will, will form. And the reason is, is because... That, you know, just to not fixate on something when there's a lot of repressed feelings and there's lots of thoughts would mean to, to experience a very um, a darkness, uh, despair, shame, guilt, fear, uh, or maybe the course would call it separation anxiety. So if you've got so much, so much repressed feelings and so much limiting beliefs, just to not do something that you can, that you can be fixated on to give you relief would be very, very uncomfortable. Because if you were just to allow that feeling, that would be the process of allowing uh, and then getting close to God again. So that would be non-resistance. So you just allow the feelings and not pick up on the thoughts or identify with the thoughts. So you'd be on the track. So usually because unless one is on a spiritual path, something will emerge from the ego. And usually when at a very low level of consciousness, it will be very obsessive because that's the way it would get relief. You know, like I'm going to watch 20 hours of Netflix, or I'm going to eat like 500 donuts, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go to the pub and stay there the whole night, or whatever it is, or some way to act out. And the act out mechanism, now if it's, if there's a low level of consciousness, then the act out mechanism, you know, it's an escape from those dark feelings. Because if you were just to sit there and not do anything and just allow those feelings to come up, it would be quite unbearable. So if I'm going to suddenly like get fixated on, um, you know, like I could get fixated on Bitcoin, you know, and then spend hundreds of hours researching Bitcoin and, uh, and then, uh, and I'd get relief every hour I'm on the Bitcoin research. And then every time I'm buying some Bitcoin, you know, like I get the relief of like, okay, this is so exciting. And I, and you get that, so this is addiction in that, you know, you get fixated on something. And when you're doing, either on the fixation, you're getting relief because it's like you're doing a thing which is a, a special or a special or a higher powered activity, which then depresses the ego because you're doing this, this special thing, which, you, which is projected with special qualities. And so now the ego is depressed and now you sort of like feel a bit better. Oh, I'm now researching this Bitcoin. I'm going to be a Bitcoin millionaire. Oh, I'm buying some Bitcoin and you're feeling happy and you're getting the relief. Now, if you didn't fixate on something or do something from a low level of consciousness, there'd be absolute despair, which could be a good or a bad thing. It might lead to suicide or a spiritual awakening. It sort of varies. But uh, now there's a different thing from higher levels of consciousness. From a higher level of consciousness, I think what's very, very great is if you've had practice in the observer or the witnesser where you start to not, so you don't, you know, when I'm in a low level of consciousness, I'm very, very identified with my thoughts and my body as being in separation, in a limited place. So then the fixation is coming out of a, out of a locality of being fixated as a, as a limited entity. So I am my body, I am my limited thoughts, and it's a very, very narrow uh, thing. And then the fixation on whatever it is, donuts or or alcohol, or whatever it is, uh, becomes very, very strong from a limited point of view. Now, the hallmarks of um, fixation from a low level of consciousness is unmanageability, uh, or, or, or an attraction to uh, destruction, or anti-life, you know, what emerges is anti-life things. So, unmanageably anti-life, <coughs> I mean, in a, in a way which is like one's own life is starting to go downhill, and one's effect on others is starting to have a negative impact. Um, you can sort of see it in a general way. Whereas you get into higher levels, it can, it's not like a, you can take what I'm saying out of context. No, you know, don't, please don't take what I'm saying out of context. From a higher level of consciousness, it's like, you know, like the St. Francis prayer, one is an instrument. 
So one is actually feeling quite happy, quite free, and it can suddenly seem like grace or something is orchestrating the consciousness to do something, and it's coming up more of a, an infinite place. So suddenly it might seem like there's a fixation to do something. It might seem to an outside party, oh, you seem to have a one-track mind in giving sandwiches to, to the homeless people, or a one-track tr one mind in doing something. But there's, it's not coming from a limited or a, or a place of limited consciousness or a place of huge repressed feelings. It's actually coming out of a more infinite space that what seems to be a dedication... I mean, even like uh, someone on, um, uh, that is very, very vigilant on the enlightened path goes into a cave and suddenly is just meditating, can seem quite fixated and seem to be like a one-track mind and seem to be abnormal. You know, like, hey, just be normal and just, you know, just have a normal life. You're just like sitting in there meditating non-stop. You, but that fixation, what seems to be what would call fixation or obsession, is coming out of an infinite a state of grace, but is perceived from others as a kind of a fixation. You know, and also, when, it, when it's in these states of flow, all kinds of things may come up and may seem to be fixated, but they're coming out of grace. So they tend to have a, you know, there's a higher, there's a higher orchestration and there's going to be a higher benefit. I mean, so it's, it's, a, it's kind of a judgment to say whether, from what place it's coming from. Um, so to, to, the perce to the perceiver, you know, one could say you're obsessed with eating donuts, but that's coming out of a limited consciousness. And also, one could say you're, you're fixated and obsessed in meditating on your own the whole day, and therefore you're abnormal. But actually, that is actually coming out of an infinite space. So, you know, say like, uh, I don't know, I'm mean, making this up, you know, Gandhi might, might be thought of being quite fixated in getting his point across, you know, just to chill out and be normal. But, you know, that wouldn't, I wouldn't be saying that fixation on creating change in India was coming out more of an infinite consciousness, even though it might seem abnormal to what might be the average in society. And also, things coming out of a fixated place can be destructive. So, the single-mindedness, well, you know, you could say, when everyone says the word mind, like whose mind? Is it coming out of your limited mind, or is it coming out of the infinite mind? And sometimes things that seem to be fixations are actually coming out of a more infinite mind. Um, and it seems like the consciousness is being orchestrated to do something very fixatedly, but actually it's coming out of an infinite space. Uh, whereas things can also seem to be coming out of a, uh, seem to be quite obsessional, one-track mind, but they're coming out of a more limited state of consciousness with, uh, with uh, high levels of repressed feelings, where there is a payoff there's actually a payoff of you know, relief from the thing. Whereas more uh, from an infinite consciousness, you know, it's more an act of, of service and love. Or there's a greater meaning behind it because it's not really being orchestrated by the limited, limited consciousness. Of course, there's different levels of consciousness. So it's, um, if someone is muscle testing, and that, another way to do it is muscle testing. I mean, everyone can judge someone of being too obsessed or fixated, but Usually, if you're doing so, you can even check your own muscle strength. When you're doing something um, and it seems to be taking you over and you're doing something, I think you might be like interested in going on a pilgrimage and be really, really obsessed with going on a pilgrimage. But if you check your muscle strength and it's strong and you're like researching everything and like how to make, you know, anti bed bug repellents and, <laughs> and sort, of, uh, sort of earphones <laughs> and whatever, and it's like it seems to be obsessional and you check your arm strength and it's strong and then something takes you out onto this holy pilgrimage. Uh, and actually, actually, that is grace. That is not a, that is not a bad thing. Mm. Whereas, um, so, but it might seem to another person or to yourself, you might second guess it, like, is this something wrong or bad? But actually, it's, it's oh. being driven by a deeper inspiration and a higher calling. So, and your muscles will be strong. Whereas, you know, like, oh, this new Netflix episode for 300 episodes is coming on tomorrow. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I feel this obsession to make sure I get through all the episodes. And then you check your muscle strength and you're watching Netflix, you know, you're on episode 99. And you check your muscle strength and you collapse. And you go, actually, this is probably not coming out of, out of a higher calling, you see. But it can, you know, so, you know, so I think muscle testing, but also 
it's, you know, sometimes you can second guess and it might be coming from a high place and sometimes mm. it might not be. Mm. So and it also can depend. But then, generally speaking, when there's a lot of destruction to yourself and others, mm. um, that is probably more the addictive, the obsessional. And if you're in the middle ground, you might sometimes be taken by things which are slightly more inspirational. Sometimes you might be taken by things which are slightly more into the lower grounds of addictions and, and escaping, and getting ego relief. So, um, yeah, you know, I can, you know, like, when I'm in the observer, it's like there, there, there is there's a witnessing of everything. And things are much more peaceful and effort, effortful. But things can take you with inspiration, which is different to when I'm feeling like there's too many, too many resentments and too many fears. And I suddenly think like, oh, I, I want to watch like, you know, 100 hours of, of, of Bitcoin. You know, that's coming from a different space, mm. you know. So, so um, yeah, I hope that was intelligible.